Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at my favourite spring meals. Now this video got quite long so this is just part one. So we're going to be looking at some snacks first and I'm making some hot cross buns. So I'm just melting some vegan butter and some plant-based milk into a pan and adding some yeast. Now I'm using a Madeleine Olivia hot cross bun recipe because I didn't know how to make them before this and I really wanted to experiment because they are my favourite. So I'm going to leave hers in the description below. The only thing I didn't add was mixed peel because, well I didn't really know what it was. And then when my mum told me I decided that I didn't like it. So I didn't. <laughs> I'm just adding in the flour to a mixing bowl. This is the first time that I am using a kind of bread mixer, I guess. Adding in some of the spices and some salt. And yeah, it's quite exciting. Although as you'll be able to tell, I found it quite hard to understand quite how to use it. But it was an experience that I, you know, won't forget. And I learned something from. See, look at me struggling just a tiny bit. And yet, even then, struggling just a little bit more. Okay, so that's in. Now, while I'm waiting for my yeast to bubble, I don't know why I didn't film that, but it's in the background. I'm just making myself a cup of coffee as per usual. Now, if you are liking this kind of video, please give me a thumbs up so that I know that you like them, so I'll make some more and hit that subscribe button so you never miss another video. If you'd like to support me a bit further, then head over to Instagram and follow me there in my quest to reach 100K. So, just enjoying my cup of coffee while those yeast bubbles, well, I'm waiting for them anyway. As you can see, very messily, I am adding the yeast step by step or kind of spoon by spoon into the mixture until it becomes a dough and then I just kneaded it per the instructions. I was a bit worried that it looked a bit weird, but it turned out well, so, you know, we're all about experimentation on this channel. We're all about trying new things. And I'm not gonna lie, it did turn out quite well. So I think we did some good stuff here. Okay, so this is the first proofing. So I'm just gonna put it on top of the oven so that it keeps really nice and warm. And in the meantime, I'm gonna make some bread. I told you guys that I was trying to make at least one loaf of bread each week. So I'm just using a nice seeded mix from the supermarket. I added in some yeast, some salt, not yeast, sorry, some salt and some vegan butter, just kind of 10 grams, and then a sachet's worth of yeast, about seven grams, and then some warm or room temperature water. That's literally it. It's so simple and so easy. If you can get uh, fresh yeast, then obviously that's better. I just, I can't get it from any of my bakeries at the moment because it is COVID times. But yes, once I've kneaded it for about 10 minutes, I'm gonna allow this to rest as well for about an hour. Okay, now, once my uh, buns are ready, I'm adding in the sultanas. Again, remember I didn't add in that mixed peel. I added in some of this orange as per Maddie's request. And then I just kneaded it a little bit to get the air out of it. Now, this is where I thought it had all gone wrong because this dough was very difficult to shape into little balls and Maddie said it had to be neat but I think we all know that I'm not a neat chef, you know? So I just did the best that I could, put a towel over them and let them rise again for maybe an hour? I can't quite remember. And while again those are rising, we're going to be shaping our bread. And just pushed out the air, kneaded it for just a couple of minutes and then I shaped it, put it into a nice greased tin, put a wet, or not a wet, a damp cloth over it and allowed it to rise again for about an hour. I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting better at bread making. I'm not the best, but look at this. And look at my reaction. I can't believe how uniform it looks, how exciting it looks, how many seeds there are in there. Yeah, I was really excited, I won't lie. And then when you take a look at these, Oh, when they rise, I feel like it just smushes out any of the weirdness of the shape, you know? And now we're putting the crosses on top. This is literally just flour and water. Again, Maddie suggests using a piping bag, but who's got time for that, you know? So I'm going to put the bread in first for about 20 minutes. Come and look at my hot cross buns. Have a look at my hot cross buns. Oh, Imogen, they're not cooked. No, but I'm about to cook them. 
you're meant to pipe this, but like, who can be bothered? And also it's quite runny. How could you pipe that? Well, it's maybe too runny then. <laughs> Now, after my mum threw a huge amount of shade at me, I finished putting the crosses on and I also put these in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes. Look at that bread. And just look at the way it just slides out. How perfect. Now, I put it on this chopping board. Stupid mistake, Gimme. I should have put it directly onto a wire rack. So, but I did that later. But still, never do that because it just makes the bottom all soggy. Okay, look at these hot cross buns. Are these not the most beautiful things you've ever seen? I just glaze them as per Maddie said with maple syrup. Next time I'm gonna try apricot jam. That would be delicious. And this is a perfect spring afternoon snack. And I personally will eat them before and after Easter. I feel like there's, there shouldn't be a time limit on these, you know? But I love them. Oh, look at them. They were so squishy. And when they're fresh out of the oven, I can just eat them plain. They're just absolutely delicious. But I saved some, of course, and I had tea and hot cross buns with my parents. This is a favorite spring snack of ours or afternoon tea idea. Okay, now first on to the actual meals. This is one of my favorites. I don't know why I always wait till the spring to eat these, but it's a kind of creamy mushroom pasta with lots of lemon and parsley. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is add the mushrooms in a thin layer so that they're all touching the bottom of a pan with some olive oil because you wanna get them really nice and crispy. This is based off a Bon Appetit recipe and I will link that in the description, but I've changed quite a few things. So I guess let's say it's loosely based on the recipe, but not really. <laughs> Once your first set of mushrooms are done, just lay them aside and then put your next set of mushrooms on and make sure you salt the mushrooms. In the meantime, I'm gonna be chopping up two shallots, nice and thin. Then once all the mushrooms are done, add the rest back to the pan with your shallots and cook them until they become translucent. Now, when your water is boiling, you wanna put your pasta on. And the Bon Appetit recipe says that you should cook it up until about two minutes before the desired time. So I cooked these for about eight minutes. They also use, I think, tagliatelle or spaghetti maybe, but I just really love this huge penne pasta, so I decided to use this instead. And again, I'm just prepping the last bits by chopping up the parsley and grating some of the lemon peel. Once the pasta is ready, add the pasta with some of the water into the pan. And this is when we add our cream. I used a plant-based double cream and I used about 270 milliliters. Now again, another addition that I made was to add a teaspoon of sweet white miso. I just love miso. I think it goes well in so many dishes and it really added a lot to this one, I think. So I added the lemon peel once I took it off the heat and I added the parsley and a half a lemon juice. And now instead of Parmesan, I used about a tablespoon of nutritional yeast, but this can definitely be completely just not used at all. And they also put butter in at the end, but I just omitted that completely. I don't love vegan butter, so I don't use it when I can. And then I just put this on a bed of spring rocket. God, I love rocket so much. And you can add some extra lemon peel if you want, but that's it. It's actually really quick to make. This took me about half an hour maximum, I think. And that was because I was filming. Something about these systems has got to change because I don't like it. I don't want to be the face of a movement that doesn't include the people that are really bearing the brunt of it all. Okay, so the next thing, I love open sandwiches. So I'm making some wild basil and garlic pesto. I'm just putting some chickpeas, some garlic, some tahini. My tahini was a bit old, which is why it's not nice and deliciously smooth. And then I'm putting in the wild garlic and some basil and half a lemon. I'm also adding in some ice cubes to make that tahini really, really smooth and creamy. And then about two teaspoons of salt, but you should definitely add salt to taste. I'm adding in the like whatever is left over of that really nice olive oil I bought and then one sort of cup of water and then blending it right up. 
Hummus is one of those things that's so versatile. You can really add whatever you want into it and change it up and, you know, beetroot or wild garlic, change it with the seasons. And then we're going to be using some of that bread that we made. I'm going to be making two slices of the open sandwiches. I love open sandwiches. It's very Scandi. I came across it when we, well, obviously lots of people do open sandwiches, but when we went to Copenhagen a couple of years ago, that, we basically had them every single place that we went. So I'm just adding some of my hummus and then some sprouts that I've been growing. I'm obsessed with these radish sprouts. They're so beautiful. And then we've also got some microgreens, some cress, which they're actually quite cheap to buy, but also just really easy to grow yourself as well. And this is part of the thing that I've been trying to make myself a bit more sustainable, grow some of my food myself and microgreens and sprouts are just so easy. And then we're adding some toasted seeds and some balsamic vinegar. Of course, you can toast your bread first if you want to. I choose not to, but it's completely up to you. I would love to see what kind of creations you guys make if you like open sandwiches as well. Of course, you could add some, you know, smoked tofu or crispy bits or whatever. It's up, completely up to you. And then next, I wanted to make some peanut butter with the peanuts that I bought from the zero waste shop the other day. So all I was doing is adding in about 700 grams of peanuts. That's all that I had. And then I'm just adding them to a food processor. I find a food processor is much easier to use than a blender, just because it's wider rather than tall. And then I just simply blended and waited. And that's literally it. That's how you make peanut butter. You can add anything you want in if you want, if you want to make it sweeter or add some salt. I just kind of like it plain, but I did buy dry roasted peanuts. You want to dry, you want to roast them if you're going to use them. But yeah, that's it. And I use this on toast and a lot of other things. This is just part one of this video, so stay tuned for the next one. I just want to say a massive thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and always supporting my channel and my content. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. I use Squarespace for my website and it helps you to connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. Manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights all on one easy to use platform. And if you want, you can also extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. So if you're interested in checking out Squarespace, you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash sustainably vegan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you very soon.